accuracy is an incredibly overrated quality to focus on and I'm going to show you a much better strategy. Most of a goalie's success comes from their ability to skate and move, not on their reaction speed. This means you should focus on upgrading your ability to catch a goalie out of position using deceptive body language, adaptable release points, and timing variety. Pure accuracy is easily shut down by a set stance goalie. Notice how McKinnon changes the angle of his shot in multiple ways that compound on each other, with lateral movement of his hands hiding the release point until the last moment and his explosive skating. These are the qualities that get you more goals. If you practice your shot with the same body configuration and posture over and over, attempting to hit the same spot in the net, this is focusing on the outcome of accuracy. Instead, focus on an adaptable release that will catch a goalie out of position. There is a better way to aim that will result in more goals. There is a major perspective difference between what the shooter can see and what the puck can see. You are missing out on a natural shot placement guide if you aim for a specific part of the net. A better way to aim is to use the goalie's body as a guide. Assuming the goalie is in good position, aim your shot for the edges of their body. It doesn't matter where the puck ends up in the net. It matters that it gets past the goalie and ends up somewhere between the pipes. Watching a highlight snipe where the puck appears to end up tucked nicely out of reach makes it seem like the goalie couldn't have reached it. In reality, most snipes whiz mere inches away from a goalie's pad, glove, or body. An accurate shot is achieved from the changing or disguising of the release point and using the edge of the goalie for a shot placement guide. Look how far this Finnish goalie had to move his glove in order to make his save. Look at when most of the movement occurred at this close range. This save is based on anticipation which comes from reading the body language of the shooter before the puck is released. As an aspiring goal scorer, understand from a fundamental level a goalie anticipates far more than they react. Look at the goalie's stance for Team Canada, completely loaded on his right leg, ready to explode to his left for the probable pass. Your objective as a shooter should be to turn this anticipation into a weakness by causing uncertainty. Nowadays, goalies are 12 feet tall with massive equipment. There is no spot out of reach. You have to learn when to shoot when they aren't ready or change the release point. Look at how little time this goalie has to make this save after diving back door. Goalies are experts at anticipation. Yes, they have to be quick, but quickness doesn't matter if you go to the wrong spot. This guy, playing like a complete Swede with no finish here after this nasty one-on-one -on -one move between the legs against Team Canada, becoming a one-on-one -on -one artist is about seeing moves as context-specific tools. Understand how to distinguish between the direction a player fakes towards and the area the player uses. Roslovic and this Swedish player showcase the exact same move but in slightly different contexts. This between-the-legs move is mostly used to fake something to the middle and get the puck to the outside. Train your mind to focus on the context a move was used in rather than the move itself. One-on-ones are all about reading your opponents first, then execution. Learning to read your opponents is at the core of hockey IQ problems. I found yet another example of the Oilers running this loose set play from a faceoff. Set plays in hockey are more like general strategies than a true set play. The Oilers' objective is to get McDavid open on the weak side with speed. Then it's up to him on what specific vulnerability to exploit. In hockey, you don't practice a set play through repetitions of the exact same conditions. You add variety and build in choices because it's almost a guarantee that there'll be some difference. Just look at these examples. One time, McDavid splits these two defenders. Another time, he spins towards the goal line. On this variation, both Dreisaitl and McDavid attempt very similar routes, but the Tampa Bay defenders snuff it out. I wonder if any NHL film coaches are game planning for this Oilers face-off strategy. If any NHL film coaches are watching, I'd be happy to work for your team. Getting paid to break down NHL film and coach players would be a dream. Oh wait, I already do that with Conscious Hockey. Link in the description for ways you can train with me personally. Caulfield and Paterka's shoot attempts are actually very similar with one of them resulting in a goal and the other a save. Let's analyze what the key differences are. 
They both utilize the same route as they approach the net. One's a righty and one's a lefty, so there's a slight difference. The route you take and the speed in which you move through each part changes the goalie's skating adjustments they make. The main difference is the pacing of where and when they shoot. Caulfield shoot the puck from further out right after a pretty significant lateral handle. This lateral handle is also done by Paterka, but you can see moments before the shot, Paterka is slightly giving away his forehand range, where Caulfield disguises his release point until he actually releases. Paterka slightly gives it away. Combine the slight giveaway with the slower pacing in the shot, was anticipated and shut down by the goalie. Tavares weaves past one defender, spins past another one, and with four defenders all around him, you'll have to see what he does next because I'll be analyzing this goal in my next video. Make sure you subscribe if you found this video enjoyable. I'll be doing a lot more videos with this style moving forward. Let me know in the comments what plays you want me to cover next, and thank you for watching.